All right, so now we're gonna, so now we're gonna pull the top nut. Actually, let me get the, we're gonna pull this top nut here. As you can see, okay, we're gonna pull that. Focus may be, focus may be a little negligible because it's on manual focus. Okay, but we're going to pull that and then we're going to dump it out into this container. Now, if you don't have a measuring tool, which I do highly suggest that you get, you can, you can dump whatever you get out of here into... A measuring cup and then basically when you're done you're gonna measure how much you get into that cup and then basically after you're done you'll put that much fork fluid back into that cup and then pour it in but I like the measuring system which I'm gonna show you later on um, how that works I just like that I like that way of doing it because I put it right I fill it up with oil to a certain point I put it in and then I suck out whatever is excess all right so damn these things are cold first thing we're gonna do i'm gonna just how to take this off so like once again this is a 22 and we're gonna just undo this here which as you already know it's already loosened it okay Just gonna want to loosen this slow, keep a little downward pressure on it. And there you go. Okay, now you have your cap, all right, which is there. We're gonna take that off. Doesn't look bad. You have your little ring spacer, okay? Just gonna put that right on top of the cap. And then you have my spacer here. And you can see what that oil looks like. All right. As you can see there, you see what that oil looks like there. Disgusting. All right, and then you have another spacer. Put that in there. Just gonna put that, I'm just gonna put that right in the order that I'm taking it out. Okay. And then you have your spring. I forgot actually when you're taking this out you should just twist it okay and we'll show you what that oil looks like it's pretty dirty okay which again is why I do this and look at that okay you can see what that fluid looks like and I should have some towels nearby. Let me get let me get a towel. I'm gonna get a towel and also readjust the readjust the view a little bit for you. So yeah, keep some keep some towels nearby. All right, now that stuff is kind of nasty. All right, so let's readjust the view a little bit so you can kind of get a better view of this and what's going on. All righty, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a sample.
I have some new fork oil. Well, this isn't really new because I used it last season, but um, I want to show you a sample of old fork oil versus new fork oil. And here, as you can see, you gotta focus. See, all right, you can see that good. Just a little bit. All right, that's your old your old fork oil, as you see there. All right. Now. pour a little bit of the new now this has been sitting in a garage well since last summer and here you go that is your comparison this versus this crazy ain't it all right youtube so what we're gonna do now we're gonna drain we're gonna drain the fork and i've got i already showed you the difference between the the two uh the clean and the dirty oil we already went over that so i'm not revisiting that again but what we are going to do is drain out our dirty oil and then after that we can fill in the clean oil okay so the first thing i'll do is i'll just tip it over and drain that out so you can see how about that for you zoom in a little bit right make sure i don't spill this stuff all over the floor the garage floor of course then you just want to pump the pump the fork a couple times okay now I, I i've done um i've done the flush or fluid replacement whatever you want to call it with just using a siphon and sucking out some of the oil like that while the fork is still installed. I mean, you can do it that way. And there was a tutorial saying to do it that way. But the next time that I pulled the fork off and I actually, when I actually dumped it like this, it still, it just was, it was just disgusting. It just seemed like you didn't get any of the, any of the old oil out or you didn't get much of it out. Because when you do this, you kind of get a lot more of that compressed um, oil that's that's in there. You get a lot more of that stuff out. Well, it's not compressed, but it's just further down in there. And the first, I mean, it's not a lot coming out now, but the first one that I did, the first pump, rather, whoop, whoop, you saw a good amount of oil coming out of there. And even now, you see some more oil coming out of there. So I'll just do that a couple times. I'm not banging it. I'm just, just nice and easily. Just compressing it. Okay. God, this fork is cold. <laughs> it's like 20 degrees outside right now, today. I do have the heater going, so that's helping. Sometimes I would even just let it hang like this and let it drip, but I mean, that doesn't really make that much of a difference. Once you're getting out now, you know, it's not going to be that big of a difference anyway. So. All right. So now we can work on the refill and we'll come back to that in a second. All right. So remember that special, I guess you can call it a special tool. This uh, bike master. This is a bike master, what the hell they call it? Well, basically anyway, what you do is you put 
this little piece here, there's some numbers on it in millimeters, all right? You can figure out what height of oil you need. So you fill it up kind of close to that height. You put this in there, right? Right at like that. And you just let this rest right on top of the, the fork tube. And any extra that's in there above that height, you pull this, you pull this like this. It's like uh, pulling a syringe. So, or it is a syringe pretty much. And you can siphon out whatever is left in there. You know what I mean? So if you don't have one of these, it's a good help to have. If not, you can cut a straw to whatever this length is, put it in right up to the top there. And once the bottom of the straw, if it has oil on it, you know you need to pull out a little bit of oil. So we are going to pour some oil in there now. Okay, so we'll pour some oil in there. It's gonna be hard for you to see over there, but at least we have the other camera. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in. All right, let's try and get this so you can see. Well, just have to do the best you can. Anyway, pour a little bit in there. Take that seal off. Okay. Now, my, my oil height is a little bit different. And that's because I'm using the, I'm using the progressive springs that you see right there behind me. Now with the progressive springs, they recommend 150 millimeters maximum, which is 5.5 inches from the top. The stock springs, I believe is 4.1 inches or 105 millimeters, I believe it said. So depending on what spring you're using, you're gonna have to figure out what your, what your height will be. I don't want to put too much in there from, from the jump because I was using this thing to suck out antifreeze the other day. Okay, that looks good. Still a little low. Could take a little bit more. But I don't want, I don't want to put too much in there because I really don't want to have to siphon any out. So. I mean, if it's a little bit, I can live with that, but none, none would work better for me. Okay, just want that to sit flat, which looks like it is, oh wait, shoot. Okay. Nope. You could actually leave this in there and still pour oil down it if you wanted to, but I don't. 
just a smaller hole to try and pour oil in which is a pain in the butt put a little more now I'm I'm doing the 5.5 minimum and I'm running 15 weight usually I'd run 10 manual recommends 10 but I'm doing a 15 weight they're saying if you're a little bit of a heavier guy you can run a heavier oil not the manual but just information from online and if you're you know a lighter guy you could run the, the 10 just have to take a little bit more now also I mean this won't be the end of it I'll have to they say to pump it at least 10 times no, that's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna um, suction up some let me just check something okay yeah so in the manual the part that the page is 4-57 that's what gives you the information for emptying and filling the forks all right so I'm gonna take out I know it's gonna pull a little here see yep sure did can you see that no nope. I'll turn it the other way it's gonna pull a little bit but you know what before I do that let's pump it a little bit all right I want to distribute that oil a little and then I will siphon oh! yeah very slow see very slow oh! all right I just want to distribute that oil throughout the system so you got to pump it a couple times okay all right let's back down again oh all righty and down and it's just to distribute that oil it tells you that in a manual just pump it up and down a couple times oh. all right there we go making sure it's fully compressed which it is all right now if there is any extra you will siphon it out now of course there's still going to be a little bit of there's going to be a little bit of the old fluid in there very little not as much as not as much as before it's all right so it's pretty much level and i know the garage floor is level but whatever pretty much level and yeah still pulling out a little bit okay a little more than I thought so probably what I'll do next time 
I'll fill it up a little less, pump it, and then check it. But that's all right. All right, there we go. Good. this point you're gonna put your, your spring back in and they tell you I used to wonder which side we go in the tight side or the loose side they said it manual states it doesn't really matter which one you want to put in they, they're like it doesn't matter at all so it pretty much can be your choice um, so this is like up to you No matter what, just remember that when you're when you're pulling out the spring, just to give it a twist as you're pulling this out, so that the oil winds down and actually stays inside and doesn't come out and make a mess. I actually kind of forgot that. I learned that from doing the from one of the tips on the uh, forums with the Buell. All right, so you have your then. After that, you have one washer that goes in, okay, then it's your spacer, and then it's your other washer, which is here, as hopefully you can see, you can see there, and that's pretty much how I have it. My spacer that I'm using is approximately 2.2 and 5 eighths um, they were recommending three inches but that was just a little too stiff so right now I'm at two two and five eighths and that kind of has been working pretty good for me it hasn't been bad now here's another thing that they recommend it is for you to put a little grease on this little bush in here all right, this is your fork cap. They recommend that you put a little grease on that. So I'll get a little grease and put on there. So I put, I put a little grease on there. Um, the other thing with Progressive that they recommend, they recommend that your spacer that you use, which is, which is this little piece of PVC here, right? see that yeah you can see that they recommend that that plus your washer equals pretty much to the top of the fork tube that's what they recommend um, and I don't have an issue with that um, I know when I got the springs they recommended a three inch to start with a three inch spacer but man it was just too rough it I mean for me it rode rough I, I felt that way but um I shortened it down some and right now at two and five eighths I feel it rides it rides pretty good especially when you go over some of the bumps because in New York our roads aren't pretty good at all so now you're just gonna put your spacer on there and the thread on this is very fine so you need to really be sure that you're getting it in there okay and don't cross thread this just and thread this all right might not get it in exactly the first time but see you just want to make sure that you can turn it in like this by hand even give it a little look make sure it's not it's not lopsided okay and you just want to make sure that you can turn it by hand like this you should be able to without much issue all right then you can take your wrench all right and just lightly lightly turn this okay you're just gonna lightly turn it just like this and 
as long as you don't feel any binding, you're good. See that, how that's going in? That's good. That's what you want. You don't want any binding. You don't want any issues. And let me find out what the torque on this is, but it should be pretty light and I doubt I can do that by hand. Okay. Okay, so here is the torque spec for the cat bolt. That's gonna be 17 foot pounds of torque, okay? The upper bracket pinch bolt, 17 foot pounds of torque. The lower bracket pinch bolt, 17 foot pounds. Lower front fork cover bolt, 13 foot pounds. So as you can see, you're not really tightening this stuff a lot. You're not killing it, okay? So 17 foot pounds, you know, that's not a ton of torque, all right?